Welcome to the Transform My Dance Studio podcast, the only podcast dedicated to helping you grow your dance studio while reclaiming your life. It's Clint Salter here, the CEO and founder of the Dance Studio Owners Association. And for the next eight weeks, we're bringing you a very special series of podcast episodes with dance studio owners, Jane Gretsch and Melanie Gard, who are also part of our Inner Circle program. Over these next eight episodes, Jane Jane and Mel will be sharing their own challenges, successes, experiences, and advice as dance studio owners. Welcome to this very special podcast event at the bar with Jane and Mel. I hope you enjoy it. Hello and welcome to At The Bar, a podcast for studio owners by studio owners. My name is Melanie Gard and I am joined by my delightful friend, Jane Gretsch. How are you today, Jane? Hello, hello, Miss Melanie. Very well, thank you for asking. That's good. I'm glad we're back in our little podcast world and ready yes. to talk. Ready to talk. Podcast world. Yes, <laughs> yes. Now we've we've been um, chatting throughout the week because we we sort of um, go back and forwards with our messages and and think about different topics as as things arrive. It, you know, rise in our studio. And one of the things that I was thinking a lot about this week was the idea of community Um, and a little bit off the back of a few things that have happened um, in and around my studio this week. Um, Mm. But I was reflecting on the privileged position that we are in as studio owners. Um, most of us go into it with the, the view to wanting to teach dance and we, and we love um, educating our dancers and, and focusing on their technique and all those sorts of things. Um, but I guess mm. I had a really strong realisation a couple of years into my studio that I was actually creating a really solid, amazing community and that there were so many things that were coming out of that um, that I just hadn't really uh, predicted or expected, I guess. Um, yeah. yeah. So we thought we'd talk about that concept today and and how you and I have both then been quite intentional um, in creating that community around our studio. Yes, yeah. Well, for us, for my studio, um, I am a values-led organisation. So my organisation has an umbrella company and the values are the same for all my businesses, but one of them is community. So um, if I'm going to, I guess, uh, I can't just talk the talk, I need to walk the walk. So it's no good having values if they're not actually leading your organisation. So for me, once we chose community as a core value, um, we had to, we had a responsibility then to honour that because otherwise, you know, people are going to start questioning our integrity. It's all very good to have values they're all lovely but if you're not going to honor them actively through the way you behave and the decisions you make then there's there's no point in having them so for me um yeah you used one of my favorite words being intentional it is definitely something that is is thought out and planned and um honored Mm. And Jane, tell me about why that value, because you, you you chose that, you know, that was something that you, you were intentional about. Mm-hmm. Um, why, why is it important to you? Like where did that come from, you know, initially for you? Mm. I think um, the, the main catalyst for, for choosing community for me is the fact that um, this, this, you know, what we're in, this business of dance, is actually about relationships. And so certainly my experience as a dance student was based on the relationship between my teachers and my fellow students. And that, that without realising it at the time, that that was a big part of my life. And I, I wouldn't have been able to say, oh, that was my community. You know, now tribes are all very in, aren't they? It's a mm. bit of a buzzword, you know, yeah. find your tribe. Well, without realising it, um, I'd found my tribe. And so a lot of what I've done at my studio is is trying to recreate what I had 
as, as a student. And also I was brought up um, in the, the church, uh, the Anglican church here in Adelaide, and um, that I could see was very much about relationships as well, obviously a relationship with God, but mostly what, what people found was that they, they had values that were aligned and they were having relationships with each other. My dad was the minister of that church and he, I, one day, um, I don't know why I did this, but I made a brochure <laughs> for the church. <laughs> uh, my daughter does this for me now too, so it must be a, like a developmental stage, make yes. a marketing brochure. Anyway, I made a marketing brochure for the church and I put a picture, I thought it was very clever, and I put a picture of the church building on the front and my dad said something to something to me then that has stuck with me forever and that was that the church is not a building but it's the people within it and the relationships mm. they have and so I took that I'm sure subconsciously and I thought that's exactly what my studio is so the studio are just four walls and a sprung floor <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but actually the studio is the people within it and because of that you know, that's the community that I'm, yeah. I'm thinking about. What about you? Because I know it's one of yours as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, a little bit the same, Jane. I mean, I had, you know, a wonderful experience growing up in my studio and my teacher was very intentional about the community she cre created around the studio. Um, you know, she was very encouraging of the older students coming in to help and, you know, it wasn't as formalised as what we do now in terms of teacher training, but mm. that was, a, it really shaped me. It really um, influenced um you know, my, my time as a teenager and it cemented some friendships and relationships that I still have now and highly, highly value those relationships. Um, I've shared a little bit in some other podcasts about my background in disability and community development. And when I started working in that area, we were very focused on how we could create community settings and opportunities for people that were very marginalised because mm. studies and, and research shows that um, if people have social networks, they are connected and feel a sense of purpose, um, whether that's knitting a little teddy bear mm. for the sick children in the hospital with another group of women, whether that's coming to a dance class, whatever it is, when people feel that sense of purpose, um, their health and well-being is so much better. Um, there's a really interesting study, actually. I don't know if you've seen the, there's a TED Talk on it um, and there's quite a, a lot um, that you can find on the internet around it. There's a 70-year study that Harvard University have done the following a group of men, um, I think it's in the Boston area, so they followed, I think it was about 500 men. Some of them were Harvard graduates and some of them were, um, you know, young men living in, in poverty. Um, mm. And this study, every two years ever since, the researchers have gone out and um, spoken with these men and their families. Um, it's the longest study of human mm. um, development and behaviour. And it's fascinating. What they've found is that the number one predictor of wellness is meaningful relationships. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't wealth, it wasn't education. Um, it, it, the men that were in um, solid relationships with a partner and had family and friends around them with meaningful relationships were fared better, lived longer, mm -hmm. um, their health was better. So I, mean, that's, I, I digress a little bit, but... Um, this is something that I'm really passionate about for our young people because I know that what we do is more than teaching dance, that we're creating an opportunity for these young people to come in and create those relationships that are going to see them through, see them through the hard times and, and help them, um, you know, not spiral into, you know, we know there's so much anxiety and depression that our young people are facing. Um, and if we can provide a space that is safe and welcoming and nurtures those relationships, I just think that's such a wonderful thing that we can do. Mm. Um, 
anyway, yeah. I've just gone around in a few different circles there, but um, I really, really am passionate about creating a space for that to happen. And mm. you know, we do, we have this opportunity. We've got these four walls. What we do within it is within our power, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and you know, you're spot on. It is about connection. Um, humans need it. We um, we need different levels of it, but ultimately we need that connection. And um, it is it is a joy to be able to do that. So, what are some of the things that you do within your studio to, I guess, honour you know the idea that you've just shared that you've got this opportunity to to build some connections and create a tribe. What what are some of the actual practical things that you do? Yeah, well, with any any community, there's there's rules and boundaries, um, and I think you know we, you and I have sp- both spoken about our um, values and and how that drives what we do within our organisations. Um, so I think it's about being really clear about the behaviours and the ways that um, people interact within our organisation, um, mm. and just on a practical level, I am very intentional. Um, around that with our kids you know for example Mm -hmm. if something happens within a class setting you know we know some kids can do Mm. things and say things that perhaps aren't you know kind always or Mm. you know they may um, interact in a way that hurts someone else's feelings Um, I'm quite upfront with our kids about that's not how we do things here let's sit down Mm -hmm. and talk about the ways that we behave as a we call them PSD kids, Peninsula School of Dance kids. This is what we do here and our values posters are up on the wall. We'll talk about those. Um, often at the start of the year, I know you you shared this as well, we'll sit down and we'll create class agreements, we'll brainstorm together. These are the ways that we're going to behave in class. Um, these are the behaviours that we expect. Um, I think those little things along the way then um, create a really strong sense of purpose. Um, mm. Yeah, so that's a general thing. What are, what are some of the things that you yeah. do? Well, that's a, that's a great framework, isn't it? And like you say, mm. you, you do need the framework to, to lean on um, and support you in a practical way. And um, certainly I'm sitting here nodding because uh, just last week, you know, uh, there was a little small interaction that happened that I caught out of the corner of my eye. And it's just a matter of, of calling people back to that, um, you know. So I just said, hey, you know, that's not actually respectful and you know that respectful is how we do things here. Um, even to the point that, you know, I'm very old school in that I ask my students to I, I uh, say the role at the beginning of every class and I ask them to say good afternoon, Miss Jane, or good morning, Miss Jane, I don't care. Um, you know how long it takes, but I feel like a nice. It really does set the tone of respect. And um, you know, if they just go here, I go no, no. That's no. I've said good afternoon to you, and I expect the same in return. So it is about setting expectations. Yeah. For me, community, um, it's like a three-legged stool. So the way I approach it is that I see that I have the responsibility to create a community for my students and their families, so that's one leg. I also see that I've got a responsibility to create a community for my staff team, so that's another leg. And then the final leg for me is uh, the opportunity that exists to make an impact in our greater community. And so one of the ways that my my studio honours that part of the, the word is that we choose charities that work with children because we are, you know, we're predominantly a child-based organisation. We realise that the families that attend our school, while sometimes, you know, are scraping together to pay school fees and dance fees and things, that actually we're in a fairly privileged situation mm. um, and that we we really want to do some good. We want to use our organisation to do some good in the world. So um, we do a lot of events and, um, you know, colour days, which I know is quite common, you know, uh, dress red for, for SIDS and Kids Day or dress purple for, for Epilepsy Day. But we do do that and we make sure that 
our families know why we're doing that. It's not just because we like sending out more emails about things because it really is just one more thing to organise, but um, that, that that is coming from a place of love and a place of service to our community. And just quickly, um, we've had uh, a delightful win come out of that. In oh, that. yes. Uh, Tell us yeah. about that. That was so exciting. It was exciting and a, and a bit Bit quirky, but we've been we've always we've always supported the Epilepsy Foundation, and that's because one of our students um, has epilepsy, and so it was our way of supporting being part of their community, that family's community. So that's where that association started with, and that student's no longer dancing with us, but um, she's still very dear to me and still part of us. So we we continue that. Anyway, we've. We've, we've supported the Epilepsy Centre for a long time and as it turns out, won $8,000 from their raffle. Woohoo! Yeah, which is something that then we can put back into our community. So I've got lots of different ideas of how, you know, we can use that money again to create more good. So I'm a big believer of karma. I know mm-hmm. that sometimes it takes a very long time to show it to come full circle. Um, and, and sometimes we might not see it in our lifetime for certain situations. We have to have a piece about that. But I do believe that what you put out in the world will come back to you. And this has just been a great example of that and really lifted us to a a new level of service. And isn't that a wonderful lesson um, for your students, that idea of, of, you know, we have served, we've given something back to our community and then look what's come back to us. It's that full circle, like that idea Mm. of circle and service. I just love it. Um, Mm. And I I love talking with our students about that idea of service. Um, We've got a group of kids uh, this weekend performing at a charity night um, in our local area for a young um, girl that's um, battling cancer and her family are, are struggling, you know, as, as mm. it happens. And um, there's another lo- local um, business that's organising a, a big um, night and we are providing some dance and entertainment throughout the night. Um, and I love the idea of the students understanding that their skills, their their dance skills, are something that they can actually share with their community and, and be of service to the community, you know, by mm. providing that entertainment and that joy on the yes. night where, you know, like it's it's just such a great thing. It's not just about, yeah. well, come on, let's go and dance. Um, they're actually doing something really positive and productive for their local yeah. community. I just love that. Um, and that is um, that is teaching us to use our gifts mm-hmm. at, in acts of service, and that is a great lesson. Um, and I, I think you you have taken students to uh, retirement homes, uh, mm-hmm. old aged care homes, as have I, and I know lots of studios do. And I'd encourage them to keep doing it because what a gift of joy that dance can bring, you know. For, for us, maybe it's just, oh, we've got to go up um, to, to the retirement village today. And it's, it's almost, almost just another thing on our to-do list. Mm. But for the recipients of that gift, it really is a light in, you know, what, what could be just another week. And so creating those opportunities and then, and then giving them a voice, talking about them and, and thanking the students. Uh, for the role they play definitely I think is is an exciting part of what we can offer. Yeah absolutely and it's those times those experiences um, I know that have um, created a huge sense of community within my studio as well so when we've worked towards doing an event or um, you know a, a charity fundraising opportunity there's there's this kind of real sense of bonding and people um, mm. cementing relationships and friendships through that. And I think yes. that then really translates back into the studio. You know, they're not just dropping their kid off and picking them up. Um, you know, those families also have a strong sense of value around the school and um, 
yeah, I think it just it helps on so many levels. So, I mean, I'd really encourage um, any studio owners listening, um, just even picking one or two things a year that you can do um, that contribute to your local area. Um, I, I loved your analogy of that three-legged um, stool, Jane, because I think those mm. those are just great examples of how it then comes back into the studio. Um, mm. Jane, what are some of the other ways that you, um, so we've talked a little bit about events and, and going out into the community. What are some of the things that um, you've done within your studio that have really um, created a strong sense of community? Um, look, there's so many because everything we do, we try and um, attach to, you know, at least a couple of our core values. So I could list a whole lot of ideas but one that's very relevant for me at the moment as I'm eight weeks out from my performance my annual recital um, is getting a group of parents together to help us with those kind of last little bits on costumes previously we've called this a hot glue party doesn't that just sound like the best time ever it does. I love um, it. <laughs> <laughs> you know we might have a costume that we think is a bit lackluster and we want to put a trim on it or we might want to make a headpiece and it's just little jobs that are not they don't require a huge amount of skill but they do take a lot of time and um, I quite enjoy them but I don't enjoy doing 40 of them for example mm -hmm. um, Anyway, we've got our, our next party in about 10 days. This year we've, we've found that we don't have a lot of those jobs to do, but we've got a lot of um, chill that, you know, when you get the costume out of the packet and it just looks like a furball type from a cat thing. It's just like oh. a big meh. It's like oh, the nice. chill's all squashed and <laughs> yes, yes, yes. it's all just... And to do those properly, you know, to steam and iron those properly so they really look nice, takes a long time. So this year we're having a hot and steamy party. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's taken it up a next level. That is so next got level. A, it is next level, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it actually will be hot and steamy. So I hope mm -hmm. that the people who've responded to that call out realise that <laughs> it's not really a joke. <laughs> um but even that, it's a, it is a bit of a joke. You know, it's tongue in cheek. But come on a Saturday afternoon for a couple of hours, bring your iron or your steamer. <laughs> oh my, I do know how to party. But we have great conversations during that time. Mm. We get a lot done. You know, often mm. there's around about 15 mums that attend, um, all from different levels. For a parent who might be feeling a little bit kind of disconnected, they can come to that event and just stand next to somebody else and I and, you know, some chill and they can create a connection that then will build, might be the start of a, a, a lovely friendship for them. And um, it's actually become quite a favourite event on our calendar. It's very practical. It was born out of a, a necessity, mm. of, but it's, it's evolved into something much more special than that. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's um, one example of just kind of reaching out to the, your community and inviting yeah. them in to be part of it. And I think we've spoken about that before, that people do want to help, you know, and it comes back again to that idea of that sense of purpose. Exactly. Um, feeling like they're contributing. Um, yes. We've done the same. Um, part of a tribe. Mm. Prop making days. Yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. where they've come in and helped, you know, we just needed big bits of MDF painted and all sorts of stuff and and it was great. They were, you know, they were down on their hands and knees painting and giggling and laughing. Um, yeah. Yeah. And a lot of them also said to me afterwards, after those days, that then when they sat in the theatre and watched mm. those little things come on and off, they felt a real sense of pride and yes. they were quite chuffed. <laughs> yes, we've had a similar experience um, a couple of years ago. A, a parent did a, a whole set, you know, one of these hot glue parties, put some kind of trims on to finish this costume and she said, oh, and it wasn't her child's class. She said, oh, I felt so excited watching my costumes. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden, I, and I loved that, and that's when I realised that the tide had turned and this was about something bigger. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, Jane, we need to wrap up because, as always, the time just flies by when you and I are uh, chatting away. Um, yeah, so we've we've sort of covered off a lot of things. Um, we have been using this idea of finishing with our top three tips. We'll try not to talk too long because I, I, I know we do like to, to talk. Um, but what are your top three <laughs> tips, Jane, for... Um, developing community within your studio? Hmm. I'm going to take it back to the, the three-legged stool. So look at look at community as, as, you know, three tiers. How can you foster relationships? That's what we're doing. We're fostering relationships. How can you do that for your student and family? How can you foster positive relationships for your staff team? Very important, which we didn't really touch on but maybe can do another time. And then how can you foster relationships with the wider community? So asking those questions um, at those three levels, I think, will will bring some really interesting, uh, well, possibly ask, ask, ask the question and get more questions, quite possibly. Mm. But that could lead to some nice discoveries if you're just starting out on the idea of embracing community as a value. Yeah, beautiful, Jane, beautiful. My top three tips are, um, well, the first one being make sure that you create your rules and boundaries. So um, I love that saying, your vibe attracts your tribe. Um, Mm -hmm. So to create your vibe, you have to be really clear about what you will and won't accept within your um, studio and I think Mm -hmm. that is really powerful um so I encourage people to sit down and really think about what kind of studio you want what kind of community you want around your studio and and write down those values write down those rules and and think about the boundaries um because people respond to that we're little pack animals we love rules and boundaries Mm. um Connect with people on an individual level. We didn't really talk about this, but I'm really big on making sure that in each and every class, and I talk about this with my student, uh, my teachers, that every child needs to be acknowledged in some shape or form, that they hear their name and they feel valued and respected and heard. Um, Mm -hmm. And the last one, just making sure that you look for ways to create those other opportunities. I think we've used some good example today. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing how that uh, hot and steamy party <laughs> goes today. <laughs> As Please, am yes. I. Mm. I'm feeling like perhaps some people might be disappointed with the reality of it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and that maybe they might be thinking something different in their head. Mm. But... Well, anyway, I'll let you know. I'm sure you'll feed them and give them a cup of tea and they'll be happy. (laughs) (laughs) Because I know how to party. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jane. It's been a pleasure to chat once again and um, we'll look forward to catching up again next week at the bar. Absolutely. Look forward to it, Miss Mel. Okay, bye for now. We hope you enjoyed this episode of our exclusive series at The Bar, powered by the Transform My Dance Studio podcast. For more training, resources and support specifically for dance studio owners who are wanting to grow their business while reclaiming their life, we'd love you to join us in the Dance Studio Owners Association. For all the information, go to dsoa.com. Take care and we'll see you next week.